Welcome back to another Futures Trading Recap for Monday, November 18, 2024. Right now, the time is right in front of 8 o'clock a.m. Eastern, 7.56 a.m. The market opens in about an hour and a half. As you know, a week ago today, last Monday, the SPY spiked 600 by a few pennies and then pulled back about 160 S&P points by Friday, by the end of the week. They're in a position now where they could bounce a little today, or maybe they'll need to come a little lower before finding the right support. I'm also keeping an eye on the IWM today. They might provide a few clues before the SPY does. There are levels on the board per usual, and under typical market conditions, price should react at the levels if any are hit. Somehow, I think it's unlikely they'll be flat today. There should be some opportunities for some trades today. As you know, we enter trades in the S&P 500 E-mini futures when the SPY comes into the levels you see here. There is a process to follow, and it produces consistent results over the long term. There is an 81% chance we'll end each day profitably. Whatever happens today, we'll come back to this chart after the closing bell and talk about it. Catch you on the other side. We are back after the closing bell. It's quite a bit after the closing bell, 10.30 p.m. I had a thing to do after work, and I was busy for several hours. I even considered not making this video until tomorrow morning, but I had a pretty good day today, and I want to share it with you. So let's talk about two scenarios. The first scenario being you played these levels by the rules, what would have happened, and then I'll show you my trades, which were much simpler. They usually are. Well, I should say that. They're not always easier, but, but today it was. After 9.45, given the market 15 minutes to settle in, they were above this level at 585.75. I guess I can go ahead and adjust the levels here to show you that's where you would have bought. You would have bought at 585.80, four bounce higher. That's at least a base hit. So we're counting four points, playing by the rules, a four-point base hit. When they got to 587.85, I wasn't feeling this level. In fact, I was expecting to ride this thing all the way up and ignore this level, but getting off topic because you'll see that in a minute. But if you did trade this on the short side, they got above it. And there's a fumble threshold above here. It was only five points out of the money that you would have reversed. So a fumble at five points and then a base hit on the reversal, washing most of that out. Never made it to 589.73. And then when they come back down into, or when they came back down into this level, you would have it at 587.90. You would add five cents to that original level. So your operating level is 587.90. And they came down within three pennies and rocketed back up more than enough to give a base hit. They did this a couple times because even the, the next time they came down, it was two pennies away. So strictly adhering to the rules, you would have not taken this trade because you don't know at this point after a bounce like this, another bounce, if they're going to go down through it again. I wanted to be on the long side today. I even said this morning that after the fall from last week, they were at a place, the SPY was at a place where they could bounce and go up. And that's what I was banking on, especially if they got above this 585.75 level. That would be kind of the access point that I mentioned this morning that the bulls would like to say above it. So anyway, we're not counting this recycle trade on the other side of this level because of just the, of the near misses by pennies. But obviously it worked several times. We're just going to be fair. So two levels hit, one official trade, one that was a fumble and mostly washed out. We can look at the one trade that I took, which was a long trade. After 9.45, when the SPY came back down into 585.80, the operating level, and four contracts were bought, triggered automatically. I'll start playing this. And you can see that happen right here. So I'm long four, planning to take off two at a base hit. End up being a seven-point base hit right here. And I trailed the other two contracts up for quite a bit more. In fact, you'll see here, since you can see my, my trade, my... Uh, order entry tools visible. I just left it this way because it wasn't cropped correctly and I just left it there and just blacked out my account number. But you can see the eight point trailer on this remaining position here. Went up for quite a bit. I'll scrub ahead here in the interest of time. You can see at this point, I have decided to not do anything with the rest of the levels. I wasn't feeling it. I saw some other things on my other charts. I decided, you know, they could bounce. I or they could pull away for a base hit, but I wasn't really thinking it could happen. But that's what these reference levels are for. And so I did not trade there. I just kept that position going, hoping that that eight-point trailer would pull me up more, and it did. Almost got up to this level at five, whatever this was, 89. But as you know, they, pulled, they came up short of that level. But I was able to ride this two-contract trailer up almost 30 points. as high as they got right there. Yeah, so they came back down. 
stop me out at that point. And that was it. I didn't do anything else for the rest of the day. So when I came back down, that was a near miss anyway of that recycle trade as we already looked at. But as you can see here, I'm not doing anything. And I stopped this recording right after noon, after 12 o'clock. Because it's kind of late in the interest of time, I'm just going to skip right to the tracking log and not talk about any forecast analysis. I'll reserve that for tomorrow morning. So playing by the rules. You can read the notes. This is the one base hit, the fumble of five points, a base on the reversal, and you would have ended the day in the green slightly. And then my trades, since I bought four contracts, the net was 18.13 points on a four contract position because I ended the day with $3,625 before commissions. Great way to start the week. So that's a wrap for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you are finding value in what I'm providing. It should be becoming pretty clear that these levels work and the process and strategy behind how to manage these levels pays off in the long run. Sometimes like today, it just pays to know what side of the tape you want to be on and let the market pull you up and pull plenty of points out of the market. I like days like this. I'll be back tomorrow morning with new levels and a new game plan. Have a great rest of your day.